Hey there, everyone. Recently, I've, I've had some questions about my solar setup, my solar generator that I made a few years back. Uh, and I wanted to do a video about what I've done to it since I did the last video, which wasn't all that great, uh, and what I plan on doing with it in the future. Now, this, this portable solar generator that I have is basically a 100-watt solar panel uh, hooked up to a battery. Uh, and I want to go over, you know, why I like this this setup better than, say, the, the portable generators that you can buy and some of the options as far as um, upgrading it and everything like that. So when you when you look at some of these generators you can buy, they're they're around 400 bucks, 500 bucks for uh, 2000 watt uh, portable generators. Now, this is about the same price that it cost me to build uh, this solar generator that I have. But there are a few things that I like about this um, more than these, these gas powered or whatever fuel they take. Um, one thing is the noise factor. Uh, the solar stuff isn't gonna give off any noise profile whatsoever other than the inverter as it's running. Uh, some of these other chargers, they, they talk about their 65, 70 decibels, which is pretty quiet. That's about the, the, the sound that a vacuum cleaner might make. Now, when somebody's vacuuming inside their home, you, I've never heard it. Uh, but if they were to start that in the garage, you may hear something like that. So while it's not a huge, um, you know, it's not like a regular generator, it's still that noise profile. And with the solar generator, uh, you don't get that. Also, it's upgradable. The, the solar setup, uh, what I like about it is that it's upgradable uh, from the 1500 watts, which is the inverter I have now, up to whatever I want it to be without having to, say, if you buy one of these other generators, uh, you're paying that $400, $500, whatever it is. And then if you, you find out down the line that maybe you need 3,000 watts or 4,000 watts, uh, you've got to, you can't just hook two of these together. You've got to buy a whole new unit that will supply that power. Whereas with this solar, with this solar charger, uh, you can upgrade that. You can add two batteries to it. You can add another solar panel to it. You can make get a larger inverter uh, and and upgrade this as you go so that's why I kind of like the the solar option better uh, the price is pretty comparable uh, but it's much more upgradable uh, it's not quite as portable as one of these other ones but it's still you know fairly portable I can break this down and take it uh, the odds are you know we all like to talk about bugging out and stuff but the odds are uh, we're going to be sending it home in most disaster scenarios, don't involve uh, get bugging out. They involve being at home, so uh, that's why I like this. Now, before we get into this, though, I want to briefly explain how solar charging works. I know a lot of people probably already know this, but uh, I just want to go through this uh, just real quickly here. Uh, first off, you get the sun that hits the solar panel. Then that solar panel goes to the charge controller, and the charge controller is basically a regulator that makes sure that the same voltage is going from your solar panels into your battery. It's not going to overcharge it. So once your battery gets at peak level, it's going to just basically trickle charge just to keep your battery topped off. And then from your battery, you hook that up to an inverter, and that basically takes those DC watts and converts them into AC, uh, where you can take that inverter and plug in whatever device that you want to plug in, whether it's a few lights, whether it's to keep your refrigerator cool, turn it on for half an hour a day, or, or whatever you need to do. Um, what size inverter you need, all, all that stuff really makes a difference, but uh, I will go through all of that stuff here. Uh, now, with this solar setup, what I did, I originally, uh, right now I have a 100, 100 watt solar panel. Uh, originally, I had the suitcase solar panel uh, that I got from Harbor Freight, uh, which was uh, it, really convenient, but it didn't, it was only 13 watts and it didn't give me enough, it didn't give me the power I needed. So basically, with this and uh, my 100 amp hour battery, it would take me over a week uh, to charge that battery. If I used, say, 75% of that battery in one day, I would have to wait another week uh, to be able to use it again. So what I decided to do was go with this Renergy 100-watt um, solar panel, which is... Uh, it takes about you could. It says you could charge a 100 amp hour battery in about a day, but my guess is about a day and a half 
is what it would take to charge that battery in, in peak conditions. So a whole lot quicker, meaning that if I only use half of that battery uh, in any given day, uh, I'm going to be able to recharge that, replenish that, and not have to wait a whole entire week for that. So that's the two uh, the, the two solar panels that I started out with was that, and I still have the briefcase one. I just don't, you know, in emergency situations, maybe that'll work. But I, I much rather have the 100-watt the uh, Renergy panel that I have. Plus, I can get another one and make that 200 watts, and those connectors still work the same too. Now, with the, the charge controller, uh, there's different types of charge controllers. This is a 30-amp uh, charge controller. This is a PWM charge controller, which is a pulse width, mo pulse width modulation charge controller. Uh, this is one of the lower, lower cost ones. The more expensive ones, the MTTP, which is maximum PowerPoint tracking, uh, those are a little bit more expensive, a lot more expensive actually. So if you're just starting out, like with me, this whole setup is basically a prototype. And what I plan on doing is upgrading all of these things in the future. Uh, better battery, bigger um, inverter, better charge controller, all of that stuff. But this 30 amp charge controller, it costs about 20 bucks and it's just fine uh, for getting, getting everything started. Now the, the amps of a charge controller, uh, you can run uh, 600 watts off a 30 amp charge controller. So basically, that's it, like five solar panels you could actually do. I don't know about all of that. There's a lot more that goes into that than just the basic equation right there. But um, I'll get into more of that stuff uh, in a future video. What I plan on doing is doing a video, doing this video with just the basic parts. And then I'm going to do a video on the calculations and then a video on what the difference different charge controllers, go into more detail about that stuff. I'll also leave a link below, uh, if you don't want to wait for that, that I did an article a little while back that goes through all of those uh, math problems and kind of explains it in plain English, you know, so you get a better idea about that. Uh, but the next one here I've got is, uh, after the charge controller, then you, you look at the battery itself. And this is another one where there's just a whole lot of different options as far as what to choose from. Uh, the one I got here is just a, a simple 12 volt deep cycle battery. You want the deep cycle marine batteries because it's going to hold a charge. You can drain the battery completely empty uh, and it's not going to damage the battery like it would if it were just a normal car battery. So these deep marine deep cycle batteries are a lot better. There's also even, I mean, this is the low end as far as marine batteries go. There are some that are three, four hundred dollars that are a lot better, that have a, a, a longer lifespan. I think these last three to five years, maybe if you're lucky. Um, so just keep all of that stuff in mind. And again, this is one thing that um, as I begin to upgrade this, this is one thing that I'm going to upgrade as well. Now, there are other things that I'm going to upgrade first, like the charge controller, the inverter and all that, because... I don't use it a whole lot right now. This is more of an SHTF type thing. But if you use something like this for camping and something that you use on a consistent basis, it is worth it to get that better charge controller, that better inverter, that better battery and, and stuff like that. It's just going to be worth it for you down the line. Uh, the next component is the inverter. And the inverter, this is a Cobra 1500-watt inverter. This one's a little bit old. Uh, so as you can see, this is the newer version here. Uh, this one is, um, you know, just, just, I think mine was about $100. This is $150 right here. Again, there's just so many different options when it comes to power inverters. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind when you're, when you're talking about power inverters, kind of the same as the charge controllers. You have a couple different types. Uh, with power inverters... You have the pure sine wave and the modified sine wave. Now, modified sine wave is less expensive uh, than pure sine wave, but pure sine wave is the better product uh, for most electronics. Uh, most electronics um, would rather have that that clean type of energy going into it. They they like the way the that the pure sine wave works rather rather than that modified sine wave. Uh, you can see right here some of the the products that uh, require pure sine wave, microwaves, uh, laser printers, not a huge issue. Uh, variable speed tools, you know, those cordless tools and, and charging the batteries. That could be a huge one in some sort of SHTF event where you need to charge those drills and stuff like that. 
Uh, maybe that, that pure sine wave inverter is going to be better for you. Uh, medical equipment as well. Um, so those are those are important is just to think about that, you know, if you do have equipment that needs that pure sine wave, maybe one of these modified sine waves aren't going to work for you. Uh, now, they are more expensive, uh, but it is one of those things that if you want something to work properly uh, and if you use it quite a bit or if you're going to use it, um, you know, more if it's not just going to sit in your garage, basically, and wait for a disaster to happen, uh, you might want to think about that. Uh, and that's something I'm going to, as I upgrade this, I'm going to do in the future as well. And a couple of other things, just to wrap this all up, just to uh, kind of package everything together. I got the Minn Kota trolling motor power center. And basically, this is just a box to keep the, the battery in and makes it really portable. You can hook this up like I do on, like I have it on mine, where I have the, the charge controller uh, fastened to the outside of this. And then you can connect the, uh, the battery cables here on the outside, which makes it really convenient. In this picture of mine, I don't actually have the lid on it right now because I was uh, messing with everything, but you can hook all of that stuff up. And then finally what I did is I just got a dolly to, to hold everything together and got a couple straps and put that uh, solar panel on it. What I did was just got one of these Milwaukee 150-pound carts. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything super expensive, uh, but these are, are pretty good. It's it's lasted me a few years now, and there's there's absolutely no problems with it so far. Uh, you can get something better if you want. Uh, it's really up to you, but uh, that works uh, for me. Now, all in all, this, this whole setup, like I said in the beginning, it cost me about $400 uh, to get all this stuff done. Now, when I upgrade the charge controller, that's going to be a little bit more. When I uh, upgrade the battery, that's going to be a little bit more. Uh, but the difference, I think, with these things is that um, you have the option to upgrade those in the future. So if your needs right now, if you only need a couple thousand watts, uh, then that's fine. But if you need more than that in the future, uh, you're going to have to figure something out. With me, my well pump is the big issue. And right now, this setup right here isn't quite big enough uh, to manage my well pump. It'll run it for a half an hour a day, which is what I'd need to kind of fill up the water tank and all of that. But it doesn't have the starting watts that I would need. This 1500 watt inverter goes up to about 3000 watts, which is right on the line for what I would need. So I need to either upgrade to a 2000 or 2500. Um, and then I'd want a bigger battery because right now with 100 watt hours, you you know, it's, it's decent size, but all that really is is a few lights and maybe running the refrigerator a couple, an hour or so a day or every other day. Uh, it's not a whole lot of energy. So uh, get a second battery, you get 200 amp hours. So it's, it's all upgradable rather than having to have a 1500 uh, watt charger that costs you four or 500 bucks. And then you have to buy another one. Uh, we've got a... Uh, we've got a really big one in the garage, 8,000 watts, uh, but that sucker's loud. So, uh, But anyway, if you have any questions on this, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, what I'm going to do in the next video here in the next week or so is I'm going to go through uh, some of those math calculations and how to figure out what size system you need. Uh, and then I'm going to go through a little bit more detail. Uh, and all of this stuff is available online too. A little more detail about pure sine wave and alternating sine wave. Uh, when it comes to inverters and also the charge controllers, uh, how the MTTP are just a whole lot more efficient than the uh, PWM, the pulse width modulation ones, uh, but those are a whole lot more expensive as well. But uh, with that, like I said, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, just let me know. Uh, but until next time, we will talk to everyone later.